Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Update. It's the 25th of October. Pretty quick update this week. As always, you can jump to the particular updates you care about the most. New videos this week. I did a video a few weeks ago on the updated free Azure SQL database offer. And there were some questions about what else is free and how to use the free stuff. So I just created a video going through the free options available for Azure, be it uh, free subscriptions for a limited amount of time, you get some credit, services that are free for 12 months if you're new, and then stuff that's always free. And also the options if you're a student, if you have a Visual Studio subscription. So I go through that in that video. So on to what's new on the compute side. So Azure Functions, both Windows and Linux plans, now have support for Node.js 22 in preview. On the networking side, so obviously there's a big push right now to get to TLS 1.2. And so there were previously some announcements around the retirement and non-support for TLS 1.0 and 1.1. What's happening is for some of the services to better help customers get ready and do that transition, they're actually gonna continue supporting them through sort of August 2025. And what there is, there's now a site you can go to, if I can open it, that is actually going through. So this is the update around sort of the new supportability for that capability. And if we scroll down within this, you can kind of see it's talking about specific links for each of the different services where, hey, that TLS 1.0, 1.1, is being supported and what the plans are. Now you still should try and get off of that as soon as possible. It's not like, hey, great, I can stay on TLS 1.0 or 1.1. Those links have how you migrate to TLS 1.2 and you really should do that as soon as possible. On the database side, so the SQL database serverless auto scale is basically doubled the number of regions it's available in. So it now supports auto scale up to 80 virtual cores using the serverless option for Azure SQL Database. And then Redis, the Azure Redis cache, enterprise and enterprise flash SKUs now have zero downtime scaling. Now, when we think of scaling, it's scaling up or scaling out. Uh, you can't scale in or down. So if we scale up, then we're making that SKU bigger. It has more memory, more capacity, more connections, more compute. When I scale out instead of up, so I'm horizontally scaling, we are adding additional instances of the same size. But likewise, it, it boosts the amount of memory in the compute. I'm just doing it in a different manner. And with the in-place scaling, it means there's no disruption to your workload. There's no break in the communication to the current cache. I'm just using the same resources with very minimal uh, interruption. I don't have to change the, the cache addresses or anything like that. But again, it's scaling up or it's scaling out. I cannot scale down or scale in. Um, the scaling has been available for the basic standard and premium SKUs for a while. And I think they do support the scaling, but obviously the enterprise and enterprise flash is based on the enterprise versions of Reddit. It's, it's a different solution that does not have that scale down or in. Miscellaneous. So if you're a Terraform user, then obviously you have the AZ API provider that gives you Azure support. So now they've released the 2.0 version of that. So that's all about the infrastructure as code, describing what I want uh, declaratively and then applying that. So the big deal here is you can think of this as a very thin layer that sits on top of the Azure ARM, which is the Azure Control Plane REST APIs. And with the 2.0, it now has day zero support for new services. So as new things are introduced into ARM, this is gonna support it. It's now based on HCL instead of the JSON. So HCL, HCL is the HashiCorp configuration language. So it's not abstracting it now into JSON. There's a whole bunch more features, retry and other stuff it now has. So if you're a Terraform person, this is gonna be great. Also, if you're a Terraform person, if you're in the Azure portal, you can often look at resources and there's the ability to export out a template. And that's always been JSON historically. What you're gonna to start to see rolling out is also the ability to export to Bicep and export to Terraform. 
So that Terraform really is becoming more and more integrated with Azure. The Microsoft Authenticator app has had some passkey updates. Obviously, passkey is the big push right now. It's very much a standard. It helps protect against the number of phishing type attacks because there's an element of proximity introduced as well to use it as opposed to just, hey, I can try and authenticate to anyone anywhere. And one of the challenges that was with the Authenticator app was the onboarding experience. It could be lots and lots of steps and it sometimes wasn't the most helpful in ensuring you were successful in the onboarding. So they've really improved the onboarding experience to reduce the number of steps and help ensure you were successful with the onboarding of the passkey. They've also added attestation support for Android and iOS. So now when I'm configuring my entry and I'm saying, hey, I'm supporting these methods, I'm gonna require attestation. That will now work with the Authenticator app on iOS and Android. It's basically leveraging the iOS and the Android APIs to ensure the legitimacy of the Authenticator app on that device. It's not been tampered with, it's not pretending to be something else. You also now have brokering support on iOS for the passkey. So if I've got uh, Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Outlook on my iOS device, and I'm using a passkey and authenticator app, I'm just gonna get that very uh, nice seamless sign-on experience. And both on Android is the big addition and iOS is now FIPS 140 compliant. So that's a big deal for those sort of regulatory requirements. It's been FIPS compliant for a while on iOS, but now it is also on Android. Um, Azure load testing now has a server metric fail criteria available. Remember, Azure load testing provides a fully managed load testing environment built on uh, Apache JMeter scripts. It can also, you can use Python code uh, to leverage Locust. But I can now use server metrics as part of a test failure condition as part of your overall test. Now, the managed identity your Azure load test runs at obviously needs read access to the metrics of the resource to enable this to work. But once you go and configure that, I can now go and use those server metrics. And there are a whole bunch of updates to the FinOps toolkit. So the 0 0.6, um, there, were, there were things around, there's a new updated FinOps best practice library. So we can see it's kind of called out here. There's new Power BI reports for governance and workload optimization. There's customizable, um, tags in the Power BI. But if you're sort of responsible for the FinOps in your organization, there's been a whole set of updates with the 0 0.6 update to this. So definitely worth checking out. Carrying on. So also, now you have immutable Worm backups in preview. So Worm is that write once, read many. The idea here is with the Worm immutable, once I've written it, uh, I can't delete it, I can't modify it until whatever restrictions and requirements I placed on that worm has expired. So now, if I'm using uh, Recovery Services Vault and I'm using the backups, if I enable that immutable storage, so if I enable it and lock it, so I have to lock it as well, but if I enable the immutable and lock, well now it will actually use behind the scenes immutable worm storage to help ensure the integrity of that. Now, you don't wanna do the lock, enable and lock straight away. You wanna make sure you understand the implications of this on your vault, because obviously, once I set this, I can't undo it. I can't reduce the time of retention. I can't delete it, which is fantastic in terms of protecting against, for example, some malicious actor that gets on and they're trying to delete your backups or remove them so then they could do bad things and you can't recover. But also there's cost implications because now, hey, I'm keeping it for that amount of time and I, I pay for that amount of storage I'm leveraging. So just make sure you understand it, but then once you've tested it by just doing uh, enable the lock, but don't actually lock it. So I enable that immutability. Yes, this is what I want. Uh, then I could do enable and lock. It will then leverage the storage worm behind the scenes to give you that great protection um, from any kind of bad actors or accidental deletion. And then Azure App Configuration Premium has gone GA. So that's that centralized service for all the configuration of your applications. So Premium increases the SLA. So now it goes to four nines. It includes one global replica. So I get um, increased access from that other region. I get increased resiliency. 
There's a higher configuration volume. There's higher request throughput. So we try and open this up. And it goes through all the details. And I can just with a single click upgrade an existing one. So here it talks about sort of the premium on the right hand side. And it's all the existing functionality plus you get that one replica included. You get higher amounts. You get the four nines SLA. There's no hourly request quota limits. Um, four gigabyte storage per resource four gigabyte snapshot storage per resource. Obviously it's gonna cost you more, but if I have those higher requirements, then uh, this will be a great option for you. And that was it. Uh, as always, I hope that was useful. Again, quick update this week. Until next video, take care.